guys I'm Nicole welcome to my channel so in this video I am going to be doing a review of this heavy-duty guillotine paper cutter someone recently asked in one of my true bind videos what I was using to cut through the stacks of papers that I was binding so I decided I would just go ahead and do a quick review of this machine now this is not a new machine I've been using this for about four and a half years or so and for my personal use this machine works out really good it is pretty convenient and it is a very sturdy machine and it cuts through the textbooks and stuff that i use it for very easily now i mostly use this at the beginning of a new homeschool year um and uh, during the year with the exception of cutting through like printing paper or cardboard now and then it doesn't get much use outside of the beginning of a school year and that's just to keep it honest but for the purposes that i use it for it works well all right so this is a very sturdy machine it's very convenient um however there are some things to be considered firstly this is a very heavy machine now i have the 17 inch and I bought the bigger out the bigger one out of the two. There's a 12 inch and a 17 inch. I bought the 17 inch because I did not want to make the investment in something like this. And then I did not have the clearance for if it is I had a book that was a little bit um bigger than 12 inches. Um, and this 17 inch is 43 pounds. So that is one of the first things to consider. It is pretty heavy. And when you add packaging, if you were to have it delivered to your home, then probably add about 10 pounds or so maybe. So let's go with about 50, 53, you know, 53 pounds. So that's one of the first things. Secondly, it is also quite large. It's something like um, 30 by 21 by 12 or something like that. Um, so it is it takes up quite a bit of space now there is a cut that you can purchase however that cut and I think it's about $40 however I my husband and I we kind of threw up this cut about four years ago always meant to come back and you know nice it up a little bit never happened but it functions really well and we also put some heavy-duty wheels on it which now makes this mobile one more thing to consider with regards to um, storing the machine when you get it is clearance for this lever now this can easily be removed however I do not want to be taking that on and off so if you were considering putting this in a corner somewhere the clearance space that you need from the base of the machine um, all the way up to the top of that is about 33 and a half inches um, or 850 millimeters a little over right so that also needs to be considered now as I said the bed of the machine is 17 by 17 and you have this um, fence here that can be adjusted so that you can cut different sizes and it can move back and forth now this here can be a little bit wobbly to be quite honest so you have to make sure that once you use the lines provided to line your your arm um, your paper your book up according to the size that you're looking to cut you really have to hold it you know hold it still and give it a really good tightening to make sure that there is as little shifting as possible now even with that if you really push against it it can move a little bit for personal use not a big issue for me but if it is you are using this more in a business setting that can actually be an issue because of course accuracy would become a problem but this has never been that has never been an issue for me this fencing here also doubles as a toolbox and this toolbox cover has a blade holder in it honestly when i first got this i didn't realize this was the blade holder i think they changed the design i think um after a while they they incorporated the blade holder into the toolbox cover and i did not realize that anyway so you can hold the blade in this when you are changing the blade it also has an allen wrench in there and some extra screws the extra screws is say some of the screws that is along the blade become stripped or you know probably you lost one for, you know somehow you have some extra screws here and this allen wrench when you get the machine this little device here that you use to lower and raise the um the fence that's going to hold your book down it actually comes reversed 
and so that if you try to engage it it actually jams up against this fence here so you use this allen wrench and you loosen this bolt you flip it around and then you use this to retighten it so you have all of that right here in this little you know fence here when you are engaging the handlebar there is a little lever here and this acts as a lock so you have to press it down and that is what's going to allow the lever to come down and engage the blade now this lever if you keep if you put enough pressure on this handlebar without holding this down I believe that it is possible for this to eventually like snap off because I think that this black, this little black part here, it is just that the bolt is attached to, it's just welded on to this metal part. So you want to be careful with that because then you would lose the safety feature that this um, offers. All right, so this advertises that it can cut 400 sheets of paper and I would say that this is about 400 sheets where I marked here. Now, as you can see, with the fence all the way up, that clearance looks pretty tight to me. So I would say probably closer to 350 sheets of paper easily. I have cut, I think the largest textbook I've cut in this was about anywhere between 300, 320 pages, and it did cut it without any problems. So I would probably, you know, consider that about 350 amount as, um, as the amount that this can cut through. Um, but this is just so that you can see it visually. Um, you can cut smaller amounts however because it takes so much effort to you know like to turn this and bring the fence up and down you know I would say that it might be easier to just use like a smaller paper cutter probably something closer to this one of these costs about what 20 not 20 yeah about 28 35 dollars on Amazon somewhere around there and the blade on these are really really sharp as well they cut really really well they have a clearance for about 10 sheets of paper at a time through through here and these work well so for smaller um cutting jobs i'll probably use something like that so sometimes when you first put your book down it can have this very slight slant to the butt from the bottom of the book so what you want to do is on the opposite end very carefully take your hand and just sort of push the bottom part of the book towards the slider and then with one hand hold the book down firmly and then with your other hand you know start to bring down the side gate and clamp it onto your book as tight as possible so that you know as much as possible you can prevent um, the book from shifting during the um, cutting process over here you have like what you call probably like a paper catcher so if you are cutting like larger books and you put it over like this then and you cut your book then this can help like catch the paper catch the book so that it doesn't just fall onto the table or the floor but if you're cutting smaller just a little piece um off of your book it is probably just going to fall through happens to me all the time and it's not really a problem but i guess that's what this is there to kind of offer you know offer that functionality for larger pieces here you have your blade guard and this blade guard also doubles as something that can help you you know like catch the blade when you are changing it you kind of maneuver it behind here so that when you remove the blade it, ha it can fall behind here and not fall over because trust me that blade is super 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 sharp so this here is your blade guard and it has a notch on this side that kind of connects to this metal plate grooves the groove right here and then this part here connects with this cylindrical metal bar and that's how that stays in place all right so this red cutting board this can be replaced but before you know before you even have to replace it this can actually be re rotated eight times um so you can rotate it four times this way and then you flip the board and rotate it four more times i've rotated it once before to do that there are two bolts to the bottom of the machine you use a 10 millimeter wrench and 
that allows you to pop the board up and rotate it it is not hard to do by any means another thing about this board is that the first time you're going to use it you probably want to engage the blade and cut into the board you know one or two times and the reason is is because that line of markation that that blade is going to make is going to give you a good idea as to if it is your spine is lined up in the right place for when you are about to make your cut. So that is something that you might want to do with that board before you actually, you know, cut into your first book or papers. The blade does eventually need to be re um, professionally sharpened, sorry, or you can replace it for about, you know, 30, $35. Um, now, I have replaced my ones, but that is actually because of user error. I, uh, I didn't realize that I had left some staples in one of my notebooks and I actually cut into the notebook and it dented my blade. Now with the dented blade, I was still able to cut, you know, for what I was doing. But eventually I went ahead and changed out the blade. You'd have to take out all of these screws along here. And as I said, you know, carefully handle the blade. Now, because I got a second blade, that is what I did because I looked up the, the cost to professionally have a blade sharpened in my area. And because it was about the cost of a new blade, I just went ahead and bought a new blade. And I'm glad that I did because I was able to just use the cylindrical um, container that the, the new blade um, came in to store the old blade. But, you know, um, if I was able to find someone that charged, you know, a reasonable price to sharpen the blade, then I don't think that that is something that I would want to be um purchasing over and over but so that is something to consider and to change it you have to take out you know like these screws and stuff here i'll link a video below um showing how to change the blade because that was actually an excellent video so um so yeah so that's how you change the blade one other thing with the blade is that after a while it can get some build up on the blade so carefully you want to kind of take that gunk off because um, and also kind of clean the board and that area because it cannot just dirty what you're cutting but eventually if that gun just stays there between the blade and the board it can you know damage the blade as well oh so one more thing with the blade is that when you are pulling down the lever to engage the blade the blade starts cutting from the top part of the machine and then it works its way down so which means it's sort of angled where the blade touches the cutting area um, to the top part of the machine first and then it works its way down sometimes that alignment it shifts and it you know it gets a little bit um, off where it cuts to the top but it may not cut at the bottom and that just means that you have to realign the blade now I've had that happen to me once however I have read of people who've had that misaligned you know um several times and to fix that there are some bowls at the, the bottom of the machine that you have to loosen and then make adjustments with these two bolts on top here to help realign the blade i would link the information with regards to how to do that if you have to um but that can happen um, but of course, when you're cutting your paper, you want to just make sure that you're really putting, you know, pressure so that the blade has enough pressure to work its way down into your book when you get to the farther end. I think I'll end this video here. This is a very, this is a machine of convenience and it works really well for cutting through textbooks. But again, I just want to say, you know, you want to make sure that you have, you know, somewhere to kind of set it and forget it, so to speak. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them below. Um, thank you for watching the video and I will talk to you in another one. Bye.